Hello, James here, Cobra Engineering. We got another Cobra Tech Talk, the long awaited crossover delete part two. Basically the lower assembly. I'm gonna cover installing the T manifold, different hose options. Also, we're gonna talk about the improved racing hose, how it does not fit with the 0304 alternator, but it will fit if you modify it and cut it with the reducer that I include on the stock oil cooler. It'll also fit any earlier Cobra or Mach 1 or 4 valve along that lines. We're going to jump in. Keep in mind I already had an oil cooler delete on my car, the Ford Racing piece. So I removed that. I had a lower T I made many, almost a decade ago probably. I got all that out of there and we're going to pick up with all that removed and jump right in. Right here, I couldn't get a great camera angle, but I think you could see there's a stock intercooler installed. I replaced that with just one bolt right now where I removed my uh, the Ford Racing piece I had earlier. Here's the lower radiator hose, or uh, radiator outlet, I should say. Normally your thermostat would be sitting here. Right here, this hose that's dripping on me is the one that runs up to the bottom of the degas tank. This is a three quarter inch. This is inch and three quarter. This is inch and a half. So there's quite a bit of variations there. Now, if you get one of these T adapters that I make, inch and three quarter to here, inch and a half to there, you can see it's there's some angles and you're going to get some hoses, but it's basically the three quarter goes on the degas line. Here's your stock hose that you would get with the thermostat housing would normally be something like this. You can cut that, try to make that work, or just go to your parts store. Also, again, the stock lower hose that would be on here. If you wanted to use this, this next down, two inch and a half here. Then you would order this with an inch and a half fitting on this end instead of inch and three quarter. But what I prefer to do is just go to the parts store Get an inch and three quarter stub holes, put that on there, run that to there, get an inch and a half holes, maybe with a little bend if you can find it, probably not too critical. Remember the opening on that oil cooler is going to be smaller than anything you do, so even if you got a little kink in that hose, a little one would be fine. Now, if you're going to pick up the improved racing hose, This line goes all the way up to the degas tank, and that goes up to one inch. The stock hose here goes from three quarter to one inch up there. But you're going to remove that, use this. This goes, well, it's hard to get that in there. You have to fish that up there. But this end, the straighter end there, right closest to the T, is going to go to the lower radiator. And then the other end, if you want to run it to that stock, cooler, you're going to have to fill around to find what's best and use this reducer and put that in there because that reducer is going to fit perfect over that stocking oil cooler. Cut that down, that's a good option there. When I ship the hose, I send the reducer with you if you want to use it, otherwise throw it in the drawer and keep it for another project. Now what we're going to do is watch me struggle to get that oil cooler back out because it's wedged in there pretty good and this aftermarket Steeda roll bar I suspect is in my way a little more. And I'm going to install the Cobra Engineering oil cooler delete. We're going to start with the inch and three quarter on here and we're going to get that improved racing holes in there and see how that works. But honestly the inch and a half on there would be fine. If you just wanted to run an inch and a half off of the, the T piece to that, with just a 90 degree in it, you'd be golden. All right, now I'll probably fast forward this and you guys can laugh at me trying to get this thing out. Here you can see. These are the oil lines because I already deleted my oil cooler. So I already have remote 
oil lines. All right, let's get that light right out of our way. Well, I'm allowed to get lucky now and then. Came out pretty good. All right, here I'm going to grab my phone and show you. There is the stock gasket. I'm pretty sure I bought a new one. I left it up there. It's just stuck on the block. It's a stock cast iron block. I've never had this engine out. So I know that's a small opening. So I've got one with a small opening. You, now in these later blocks, you can run one with a larger opening that will seal on it. With the earlier blocks, it will not. So don't screw yourself like that. Now again, you're gonna laugh at me while I work to get this stupid bolts in here. This might be a little deceiving because I do have this side of the engine lifted up. I'm probably going to change out the engine mounts while I'm in here. I have solid mounts. I'm going to go to poly. Now we'll take a look at this improved racing hose. It supposedly interferes with the radiator, and I can probably see why. Let's get these oil cooler line or oil lines out of the way. When I hook those up, I'll show you where I put the filter normally. I've done a few of them like this, and it works pretty good. And again, this hole's kind of in the way there. You want to hook it in there. Get it on the lower radiator first. And then we'll see what we got. I can see where it interferes with the uh, alternator. Oh man, that is something, isn't it? Well, sure is fun working around this camera, but I'm gonna get it. I think it's gonna go on there. Oh, there we go, I can see much better now. All right, let's get it on the radiator further. Those power steering lines sure are a pain in the ass. The next, the gray car I'm working on, I'm installing all the end lines aftermarket. Screw this. As you can tell, I didn't do this ahead of time. You are learning with me right now. Nothing more humbling than humiliating yourself on YouTube, right? Well, I can get it on there. But as you see, it definitely doesn't fit. I'm going to get that all the way on that radiator. Yep, that is definitely an issue. They're not lying. Don't believe we're going to be able to do this the way I want to. That hose would need to not have that extra jog in it right over here. <laughs> Uh, 
That extra jog right here is what's killing it. So I am confirming to you that that is not going to be the option. I'm going to come back with option two. All right, here's plan B. I've had this for a while. It's an inch and three quarter, 90 degree holes with 10 inch legs. I got my T adapter on the bottom here. Now I had to trim this down to fit. And of course, it took a couple tries here and there, but I took one of the approximately four inch lengths. And that's what I'm using here off the bottom of the radiator. I have the degas tank already connected. Don't be that guy. Put the hose clamps on first. Same thing here. And of course, I am that guy. That's why I remembered not to forget this time. So I'm basically just going to put that up there. And then this goes on here. Now notice this is a little longer because I want this hose to push back and kind of loop around a little bit and come back in so it doesn't hit. In fact, I'm going to put some plastic sleeve over this uh, sway bar because I've noticed it's rubbing a little bit on this. And I always use braided steel lines when I'm doing remote filter lines for oil. No chances on oil lines. You don't want to rub through that. I have a friend who did that. He was lucky to save his engine. So I'm not going to put the hose on quite yet because i got to get these oil lines on, and it's a pain. So every little bit of ounce of room I get is going to help. The routing is a little tight. I don't know what I was thinking. I did this many years ago. So you're going to watch me struggle while I fast forward this. All right, it's going to be bad. I'm going to cut the camera, and I'll come back when those are on. All right, well, I got those oil lines on. That was a massive pain, the usual knuckle quarter turn or tenth turn. And then if you all uh, on this Sunday afternoon heard some screaming, hollering, and a lot of cussing, it's because I'm like, hey, look, I forgot to hook up the oil sending unit. Hey, look, I forgot to take the oil sending unit out of the old thing, the old part I took off, and put it in my new one. So I'm going to take a little break now. I'm going to run down to the local church and say a penance to the priest for all the horrible swearing I did and try to get that in there now that everything's together because I'm not pulling it back apart. All right. I made her back. The priest forgave me. He wouldn't believe it. He had the nerve to ask me what I did this time, like I'm there all the time. So I got the temperature sensor in here. That's a 1316th, if anyone's curious. And if you're reusing it, make sure to clean the threads really well. Put new pipe dope on it or Teflon tape so it'll seal. Now I have two ports on here. One's out of the engine, coming from the oil pump to the filter. And the top one is in. They're marked out and in. I want the sender, ideally, on the in. Because that's telling me the oil pressure going into the engine. That's most critical. Now you see I got the lines on. Now we're going to rope that hose in there. And that's not going to be a gimme. <laughs> and try to get in there, get around them oil lines. Let's see if the camera's completely in my way. Oh, I got her started. All right, let's I'm gonna get that hose all the way up there. Reach up there with your fingers and feel and make sure it's on there all the way. Man, you don't want to deal with a coolant leak after all this work. In a good way, so it loops around nice and free of everything. Maybe I'll bring her in a little, even. Yeah. Find a happy medium where it's not hitting this. I'm going to again sleeve this with some plastic in between. You do not want them touching. Even though that sway bar doesn't move much, it's still enough. Silicone holes a little better than rubber. Rubber would definitely wear through. 
And so you gotta watch your power steering lines here, all that stuff. I'll button this up. I think we'll fill her up with coolant and see if we got any leaks. All right, here you can see this is where I have my filter mounted. I have a mount up here. And the lines just come around this plastic and down and pretty much straight in. It's kind of hard to see where everything's routed here. It's so tight underneath there. Again, you're going to have to note on your oil filter adapter where what line is in, what line is out. I have it marked on the oil cooler delete. Remember the line coming out of the oil cooler delete goes into the filter, out of the filter, into the delete. Don't match in, in, out, out. That's not the correct way to do it. A few moments later. Well, as you can see, The new engine mounts must have been a little different than the old ones. I lowered it down, tightened it up, and it ground it out. The alternator wire there comes down on a pulse right into the end line for the remote filter. Luckily, I had a fire extinguisher here and uh, got it out and disconnected the battery and I need some work. I'll have to replumb all the lines and we'll see what the alternator looks like. I'll get her out. Never ending fun. The next day. Well, here you can see there's my filter mount. The hose is up and behind this plastic. Come down. And then come around that and up. You can see I got everything zip tied, pulled out of the way. I got a sheath on this sway bar. A different alternator, and that shorted out when I put the different engine mounts in. I was a little fire, a little scare, but nothing big. That's why I replumbed and changed my mind, and I went with the nylon hose. The steel braided hose is what ground it out. And Start on the alternator head. And that's what caused the fire and hopefully no other damage. I haven't even put coolant or oil in yet. So we'll keep working at her, but you can see how I changed the routing and did it a little different. All right, it's a balmy 35 degrees out here. A little sweatshirt weather for us Upers. I thought I'd come out to the storage unit and show you since it was a couple months since I shot them videos that I did get fluids in the car. Got out here great. Drove it around, everything works great. No leaks on the concrete, it's been here for a couple months already. Sitting right next to the GT500. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it answered all your questions about that lower hose assembly, but I doubt it did. So write some comments below, I'll answer them and other people can see it. Otherwise, you can write me at james at cobratechtalk.com with any suggestions for other videos or any questions about this one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.